let us now discuss about extracting the data and how to improve the performance of Tableau. If you're using any of your standard corporate databases, such as Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle, you may find situations where it's impossible to perform data analysis. And the first of those problems is poor performance. If the database is very large or has not been fully optimized by your database designer, real-time analysis with Tableau would become so much more difficult for us. Or if you wish to continue your work with a centralized database when you're, say, at home or if you're trying to connect from a different location, connection to the database would become impractical because of the size of the database. Also, if you want to share your workbook with another Tableau user who doesn't have access to your data source, how would you share it with them? If they have Tableau Reader, which is the read-only product which is free for download, your end user still requires a data source which is has or which has an extension called as let me write it here dot twbx tableau package workbook right tableau package workbook and this is going to be very large data set Hence, these are the various situations which demands you to use the data extract feature of Tableau. And the data extract is a Tableau proprietary file that contains the imported contents of another database or data source. Now, let me show you that. When I click on, say, sample superstore dataset, this data source is the initial location to extract the data. Either we can establish a live connection with this data source or you can extract the data. Also, you can decide on whether you want to extract entire data or do you want to extract a portion of the data. Say you have selected the radio button extract here. And let me click on edit there. Here, you can add your own filters and say, all right, I do not want all the fields. Maybe I want the customer name. And do you want all the customer names? No, probably you want only the top 10 customers. This will ensure that data for all the 9,994 rows, which are ideally there in the sample store, would not be extracted instead a limited number of data points or records would get extracted. Maybe you do not want to work on the entire data set which runs into millions of records. Maybe you want to work on a small subset of this particular data set. And that is a situation which demands you to extract, edit, add multiple filters if need be, and then extract your data. This is one option. Let me show you another option on how to extract data. Let me go to sheet one here. All you need to do is go to data, go to this sample superstore, and click on extract data. This would show the similar kind of a pop-up which I've just shown you. Or you can also simply right-click on this data source and say you want to extract the data. This would also show you the similar kind of a dialog box which we have seen earlier. Let us try to understand the various options here. You can add your filters and narrow down the extract to a limited set of data points. This is the first option. The second option here is, and one more thing I forgot to tell you is, Filters are specified similarly here as they are in Tableau. 
when dragging a feel to the filter shell. When you drag something onto the filters, for example, you want to view the data for the various years, for the various segments, and say you want to see the profits. And now I want to drag and drop on filters, select years, and say I want to select only, I'll select none here, and choose 2011. I'll see whether it's applied or not. All right, there you go. So this operation that we have just performed here, a similar kind of operation would result when we do a filter here in this pop-up. This is option number one. Option number two is aggregate the data. When you aggregate the data, you can actually roll up the data to years or quarter or month or day. What does this exactly mean? Let me show you here. Let me go to the data source. And here, when you see the audit date, you have the various dates available. So you have the data for 2011, 2012, 13, so on and so forth. When you extract the data and when you, when you aggregate it to the year, it is going to add all the relevant data for the years. And it is going to represent the data which is aggregated for 2013, data which is aggregated in 2012, 2011, so on and so forth. What this actually does is, it is going to reduce the size of your extracted data. Thereby, the kind of analysis that you want to perform later on would become much faster. Let us look into the third option here. You may either want to extract all the rows from the underlying data source, or if you apply the filters or rollups, and if you want to do an incremental refresh, the incremental refresh would happen only for those filters and only the aggregated data. For example, let me add the filter called customer name. And there I go, I select the top 10 customers. So from here on, when I try to extract all rows, it's going to extract all rows with respect to the top 10 customers and with aggregation roll up to the year date. And even if you do an incremental refresh, it would perform an in incremental refresh only on these entries. Now, incremental refresh is for any subsequent refresh. For example, if you're extracting the data for the first time, it would extract all the rows. And from there on, each time, if you want to extract all the rows, it will be cumbersome and a time-consuming process. Hence, what we can ideally do is we can extract all the data for the first time and from the next time, we can ensure that only the changed fields are updated in the extract by checking this option which says incremental refresh. We can hide all the unused fields which I've already shown you previously. We have an option called history, which is going to, or one more thing, even before that, top option. Do you want the top 10 rows, top 20 rows, or what amount of, or what percentage of rows do you actually want? Right? Or you can click on history here and see the history of your refresh. So for now, let us extract all the rows. There you go and it's asking you to choose a location i'll save it in the default path and no i do not want to replace that i'll say this is an extract and save this now it's taking a while while it saves now if i right click you can either uncheck this option which says use extract or you have a bunch of options available here. Now here, 
I can go to extract data, click on the history and see what's the history here. It has done a full refresh and 329 rows were updated given this filter condition and given this aggregation. Now, if I right click on this data source, go to extract, there are a lot of options available. I can go to history. If that extract was, oh, let me check the option which says use extract. Sorry, my bad. Now, you have an option to refresh. If at all there is any change, any updates which have been done, you can perform this refresh. You can either do a full refresh or an incremental refresh. That depends on us, on what option we exactly want to choose. <clears throat> if you do this refresh for the first time, it's going to import all the rows. And if you have selected the incremental refresh there, in the extract data option there, it is going to extract or it's going to refresh your data only with those incremental changes. All right. Now, we can also automate this refresh. If you use a Tableau server, you can store the extracts on the server and schedule automatic refreshes at regular intervals. This powerful feature can often bridge the gap between the cost benefit analysis, the speed of analysis. Now, let me click on properties. There you go. It shows you the database. How is it extracted? What are the filters that you have applied? What is the type? Tableau Data Engine Database, so on and so forth. There is also There are also a lot of options available, which includes your append data from file. You may add data to an existing extract from an external desktop file, such as if you made a change on an Excel sheet or Microsoft Access or a text file or a CSV file, you can choose this option. The column names and the data types in the external file must match to those of your extract. That's the condition. Whatever fields such as customer name, segment, etc., that you have in your extract should be same as your external file. I'm using Tableau for Mac. If it was Tableau for Windows, you would have seen here another option which says append data from data source. You can select any of your data sources and append the data from that. Optimize, as I've told you, if you have any calculated fields, this option will evaluate the results of the calculations and write them to the extract file. This may improve your performance when you have large extracts because calculated fields won't have to be re-evaluated on the fly. And there are a lot of other options available. You have an option to remove. You may remove the extract and return to the underlying data source. And when you choose this option, remove, you will be provided an additional option to delete. For example, look at that. It's asking me to just remove the extract or remove the extract and delete the extract file. And you have history, needless to say that, that you'd be given the details about the history. You can clear the history just in case your database is corrupted or if you want to make any further changes. This is how powerful your increment extracting the data is when it comes to tablet. Now we would be discussing about the data blending options within Tableau. And that ends this part of our tutorial. Post data blending, we will move on and discuss about the top charts of Tableau.